In lessons six, one, two, and three, we learned all the basic syntax of arrays. So now we're ready to put it to use and try writing some standard algorithms. Uh, there's a lot of things to cover in this unit, so don't try to learn it all in a few minutes. But um, most of the algorithms that you'll see here are covered quite extensively in the Array 2 section of Coding Bat. I still think that's the best place to learn most of these items. A couple things that you won't find in there, uh, you won't find one dedicated to the mode, um, looking for duplicate elements, okay? Um, and I don't think you'll see any full-on shifts or reversals of the array. So I've written some extra uh, methods below for you to practice those things. I still think you should try these on your own. I've given you the replit link so you can try writing them all on your own. But if you're ready to see some solutions, I'll show them to you now. And I'll start with the one called any duplicates. So um, this is not the array. This is just, I wrote a little piece of code below that's going to generate a, a random array, meaning random in its length and random in its values. Uh, so we don't really need to worry much about the length of the array or the values that it possesses. Our code needs to really work at all times, okay? So we don't want to write something just to work for a specific solution. But uh, the bottom line is, is we're going to look through this array. We're going to return true if there's any duplicate values. So another way to think of this is sometimes we look for an array to be diverse, meaning that it doesn't have any duplicate values. Uh, but either way, it's, it's the, two, the two algorithms are very similar. So, for example, like if the array has an 8 in the first index, I could look through the remaining indexes and see if there's any other 8s. And if I found one, I could immediately return false. I wouldn't really have to do anything else at that point. Uh, I'm sorry, I returned true uh, because I would have found a duplicate. But if there weren't any 8s, then I could go to the next number. Maybe the next number at the next index is a 7. And I could look at all of the remaining indexes for a seven. If I find one again, I'll say true. If not, keep going, go to the third index, the fourth, and so on. Eventually, I'll run out of indexes. And if I do that, if I make it all the way across the array and I never find a match, uh, then, then I'll go ahead and return false. But I won't return false prior to that. And that's important to remember. So this is not an if-else situation. We need to keep going if, 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 looking for duplicates but we don't want to give up if the first one doesn't work, um, okay? So I'm actually going to write two loops here, and uh, it'll become a little bit obvious to you why I do that in a minute. I'll go ahead and start the outer loop at zero. You could actually stop the outer loop. If you didn't do this, it would be okay, but you could actually stop it one index shy of where we normally would. So instead of at minus one, the last index, I'll stop it at minus two, the second to last index. Um, the reason is, is I, since I'm looking for duplicates, I don't really need to go to the last index because I couldn't possibly find a duplicate after it. And this inside loop, I'm actually going to start at I plus one, meaning one to the right of where the outside loop uh, enters here at. And then uh, I'll go ahead and run this one all the way across. And so this one will be responsible for that last value. And so that's at length minus one, J plus plus. And then it's a pretty simple question. I just ask if the value at nums I does in fact equal the value at nums J. And like I said a minute ago, if they do equal, then I could go ahead and return true immediately because I've found a duplicate. Uh, however, if they don't equal, you can't say else return false because you need to continue looking for more. So we don't want to even consider returning false until we've given everybody a chance. If there were 10 numbers in this array, this outside loop would run from 0 through 8. Um, so you take the first number, look at the remaining 9. You take the second number, look at the remaining 8. You take the third number, look at the remaining 7, and so on. Um, like I said, once you get to that second to last number, you would then go on and check the one number to its right. At that point, you'd be at the last two indexes of the array, one for I, one for J. There'd be no more number combinations to consider. Um, if you didn't put this minus two here, if you still put just a, a minus one, it would still work. It just, it would run like one extra iteration. No big deal. Um, so let's go ahead and see. We don't really know what's going to happen. These numbers are going to be random. So we're going to have to kind of like peruse the numbers ourselves uh, as, as it runs to see if it worked or not. 
So mine said true, and that's good because uh, you can see I had two fives. Um, I also had two 14s. So if you run this a few times, you know, may, might take you five, six times, but you know, you should try, try to get at least a couple of trues and a couple of falses and see if it ever doesn't work. But again, it's just kind of on you. These are random numbers. So you have to sort of look through them yourselves and, uh, and figure out if this is working or not. Um, so again, I got true this time. And that's correct because uh, I had two nines in the array. And again, I, I never really know, but I, I do encourage you to keep running your code until you see at least at least a false and a true and uh, you know, make sure that it's doing what it's supposed to do. That next method says return true if it doesn't have any duplicates. So we could do the exact same thing, okay, that we just did. Um, and just actually return the true and the false. So if you want to test if there aren't any duplicates, then as soon as you find a duplicate, you could say return false because you violated it. Okay, so here I finally got false. And this is good because if you look at my array, uh, there aren't any duplicates in it. There's a three, a four, a five, an eight, a 13, and a 14. Um, okay, and so like I said, I could take this code here just run it the exact same way and just, uh, oh, let me try that again. Oh, I think I missed the control button. And I'll just change this to say false and this to say true. Uh, there's other ways you could do it. Okay. This is just a suggestion. All right. Uh, another one that you won't really find in coding bat is the mode. So looking for the mode is a little bit tricky. And again, I've got a method here for you to try it. And I'm actually going to do something real similar to how I just set up this any duplicates. So what I'll do a little differently, I'm still going to use kind of this nested loop structure. Uh, what I'll do is I'll pick a value that comes to me from the outer loop. So like whatever number is at index i. And then I'll loop through all of the remaining values, counting every time I see that value. So if the next number over matches, I'll bump my counter up and I'll bump up my counter again and again and again. And I'll have to keep track along the way as to like which number occurs the most times. So I think one of the tricky things to this one is, is we're going to have like several variables uh, to keep track of. So for example, I'll probably make something like, uh, you know, maybe, maybe what I think the mode is now. Um, you could put in, you know, really like a fictitious value, like negative one, you could put in nums zero, uh, just you know, go ahead and assume that the first value is the mode. We're probably gonna prove otherwise anyway. And then I'm gonna put something here, I'll call it like uh, max count. Right now I haven't counted anything, so I'm, I'm gonna put that at zero. Now, my outside loop, again, is going to start at zero, okay? Uh, and it's gonna go, technically, again, I, I could go all the way across the array or, or really I could stop it at length minus two here um, because I'm, I'm gonna be making comparisons after it. So I don't really need to go all the way to the last index, but if I did, it, it wouldn't really matter. Like if that bothers you, okay, it's no big deal. Now, on this one, I am gonna write that same inside loop that I just did a minute ago. Uh, so I'm gonna start it at I plus one uh, and I'm going to walk it across the entire array this time. So this one will actually reach that last valid index. Okay, and I left a little room there because here's what I'm going to do differently. So this time I'm going to make up some more variables here. One is going to be like this, I'll call it like, like this mode or current, maybe I don't like to use the word this because it's reserved. Let's call it like the current mode. And that's going to be whatever number comes to me right now, like right out of the array. So if I'm at index zero, maybe that's the mode. If I'm at index one, maybe that's the mode. I don't know. And then I'm going to put something here like int current count. And I'm going to actually initialize this to one and as opposed to zero, because what I'm thinking is, is like, let's say for right now, like, okay, let's say I, I've found the six. Well, I've counted one six at that point. And then what my inside loop's gonna do is it's gonna go all the way across the rest of the array looking for more sixes. And every time it sees a six, it's gonna count it. Once I'm done making that count, I'll compare my current mode count to my max count. And if it's winning, 
then I'm going to change both of these values, the mode and the max count, because apparently I found somebody new, you know, who, who there's more of. Like if we look at this one, it looks like there's a lot of sevens and maybe fours, but I think there's the most sevens. So at some point we would have got into this seven here and we would have walked across the rest of the array counting those sevens, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm, I'm pretty sure that would have won. Eight would have then beat this count and I'd reset both of these variables and then I would be tracking that number. Okay, so here's, here's how it's gonna look, okay? So I'm gonna ask a question. I'm gonna say if the number that comes out of the array at index J, which you know that's, that's where we are right now inside this loop, equals the current mode, then what I wanna do is I wanna take that current mode counter and, and increment it because I found another one of it, okay? After I'm done going through that inside loop, which is again, taking me across the remainder of the array, then I'll make a question right here. I'll say, okay, if that current mode is greater than and I, I guess technically you could do greater than or equal to because the problem, if you read the directions up above, it said don't worry about ties. So uh, if the current mode is greater, I'm sorry, current count is greater than the max count, okay, then I'm going to go ahead and reset. And you have to actually reset both variables So because in the end, we want the mode. And to track the mode, we have to keep track of the count. So you actually have to reset both of these. So the mode will become the current mode. Uh, and then the max count is going to equal the current count. And that's going to help me in my future comparisons to make sure I'm getting the correct one. And then when I'm done with all of this, then I'm going to return the mode. Uh, is this the only way to do this? No, of course not. There, you could create a million different ways to do this, but um, this is actually one of the easier ways, I believe, to sort of comprehend. Although, look at me, I went out of bounds. So uh, I think I forgot my minus one right here. Let's try that again. And, uh, and again, we kind of have to eyeball it. So this is telling me that five is the mode. So let's see here. I see starting at that five, I see one, two, uh, I only see two fives. Uh, and I feel like there's more sevens and twos and something went wrong and oh, that's good. We got to fix it. Um, and I can see my mistake. I incremented the wrong variable. Okay. That's good. I, uh, I don't mind leaving that mistake in there. It's okay that you guys see me make a mistake. Um, I'm not perfect. All right, let's try that again. I should have been counting. Okay. All right, so now I got a two. All right, so let's see, two, two, there's three, there's a fourth two, there's a fifth two. So I got five twos. Uh, I don't see, let's see, I see like three, four fours. Uh, yeah, I don't see any more sixes or anything. Okay, so yeah, I believe that's correct. Okay, let me try it again, see if it's working. Um, Let's try it out once more. And I want to point out to you too, if you notice, I started this loop at I plus one. Um, if you're worried that like it would miss something, it won't like, like even, even like over here when it picks up this one, it, it, it doesn't really matter at that point if it doesn't count all of the ones because one of the earlier ones would have invoked the correct count. So whichever one we happen to encounter first would invoke the correct count of ones. So if a successive one didn't invoke the correct count, it wouldn't matter. And since we're always hanging on to the maximum, nothing in like the interim would take over uh, the, the count. So like this one had three sixes, but that wouldn't have like, uh, you know, bumped out the ones or something because the ones had already counted like five or six ones. So yeah, looks good. Looks like it's functioning just fine. Okay. So again, um, you know, here, here I was tracking those maximums 
uh, here, I was kind of like the other one where I picked a value and then I picked all of the remaining values to its right. But in the middle, I, I just assumed that whatever value I picked might be the mode. I mean, it might not, but it might be. And then, uh, yeah, we just walk all the way across and we keep counting every time we find one. And if it turns out that there was more of this number than there was of the previously thought mode, uh, then we reset it. And so like in this one here, it came back with a six. Now, at one point, the, the problem would have thought that five was the mode because there was three fives. But then later, it looks like it counted four sixes. So six took over the mode. Uh, later, it counted, it actually counted four threes. But the way that I wrote my code, I had to see greater than. If you had put greater than or equal to there, maybe this would have returned three as the mode. And that would have been okay. This is a bimodal uh, you know, set of numbers. And, and, and like I said, my direction said, don't worry about it. You know, if there's more than one mode, no big deal. You know, if we wanted to get fancier here, we could, we could do some things to create ways to return multiple values, but we'd have to encapsulate them in something like an array or a, a string or um, an array list. And, and we're not quite ready for that yet. I'm going to stop this video and make another one for the remaining methods.